Happy Tuesday, everyone. This is Tara from the Reclaimed Ranch, and I have a jam-packed video for you today. I'm going to take you down to Solana Beach, where we had a painterly paint um, class with Debbie Beard from DIY, and my friend Debbie Fremmer is on her creative team, so I went down with her to support her, and we had a great time. We went out to dinner together, and mingled with a bunch of creative minds, which is always great to do. And so um, you'll see that there are six creators on her team and they each had something to give. So this is the, the headquarters, DIY headquarters in Solana Beach from Debbie Beard's Little Shop. And they put out a beautiful spread of food. It was so, so good. And it was just a great time, even though one day it did did rain really, really hard, but that didn't stop us from having fun. So here is Jen McKee. She painted us a ugly grouper, she calls it. And this is my friend Debbie here. And she did a beautiful peacock feather arrangement. So that's what I ended up painting because I thought it was just so cool. And... I'll let you watch here for a few minutes with some music. Debbie's just a wonderful person. She is so kind and so knowledgeable. She has a shop called Elsie Lane Boutique in Spokane, Washington. So if you're ever up her way, go in and check it out. It's just super, super cute. And she's just a very talented artist. So we wanted to go down to the beach and notice that it was all closed off. Well, we um, talked to a lady from NBC that was down there filming. And I guess there's a big project going on they are over the next 50 years going to be adding I guess 25 acres of beach from Solana Beach down to Encinitas and that's going to help keep the erosion down from the waves and stuff that are getting too close to the cliffs and here's our group it's Jill Debbie me and Jojo and we just had a great time just getting, it's just kind of like a girl's night out, but a longer weekend. And I always love going down to support Debbie. She's just such a beautiful person. And Jojo there, she's got her own little thing in Oregon. And so we always like to go to Kobe Swap Meet. This is just a really big thing down there that they have every weekend. And we went last time and found a lot of goodies. And there was so many things that I wanted to buy, but of course, trying to fit it in your suitcase on the airplane is it's a little difficult, so I had to be really cautious and wary of what I was buying. But it was still really, really fun to go just to see all the different things that were there.
I really wanted this pair of brass candlesticks. They were huge. But of course, again, trying to get those home would have been a nightmare. These trunks are pretty cool. This lamp was very interesting too. I loved the feet on them. Um, and this mirror was humongous. I really liked this lamp too, but it didn't have the third little shade to it. And I know I could probably find one, but trying to find or getting delicate stuff home was just not on my to-do list. <laughs> These bags were so huge and cool, brand new. Um, but she did want 25 per bag, which I understand they were well made, but they were super heavy. So I didn't want to bring those home either. And these paintings, they were so old and they were signed, but what cool pieces you can find, you know, you just never know what you're going to see. And I really wish I would have got this rocking chair, this brass rocking chair. I've never seen anything like it. They wanted $25 for it. But I passed and I regret it. That's just something that you don't see often. And it, especially that big. And then there was this really cool uh, baby bassinet. All hand carved wood, which was really neat. Again, this this uh, piece here, oh, the patina on it was absolutely gorgeous. And the only reason I left it was this big part where I was holding. You could see there's a crack there, but it went all the way around. And I was afraid that it would just not make it home. So I did, I did end up leaving that there. And look at these old pieces. These were all connectors to like a compressor and this was a, like a flamethrower, I think, <laughs> or a torch of some kind. This guy had a lot of really cool pieces. And this grinder. I mean, I've never seen a white one. You always see the, the old rusty silver ones, but. And then you had this tin from the movies, an old helmet. That can was cool, that tin can there. And then this old looking cannon. It was just a really cool table. <laughs> A lot of different things. And then I'm always drawn to the blue and white. I don't know why. I guess I just blue is my favorite color and they're just gorgeous pieces. Very pretty. But they wanted way too much for them. So look at these binoculars. They were like super cool. Really old, all metal. I should have got those too but I never even asked how much they were. And then I came across this. I fell in love. I am just, I don't know what it is about copper, but I love it. And it's got the really blue or pretty blue patina. Look at this, you guys. This piece, I think he wanted 325 for it. This old cash register, oh. If only I could. I mean, I guess I could have had it shipped home, but then what? <laughs> I don't have anywhere in my house to put it. And then they had this old typewriter, too. Very, very cool. 
and I am drawn to ironstone. <laughs> so of course I picked, picked this picture up and it was definitely stamped. And so here I am, I'm like, oh, I don't think I can leave it. I did bring a, a little bit of bubble wrap with me this time. So I ended up getting that. This lunchbox, the guy said was from the 1920s, which is kind of cool. Even has its thermos, original thermos. And this horse, oh my goodness. I fell in love with this horse. So cool. All right, so now we get to get into a couple of projects. So I have a set of um, bookends that need, need something on them. They're just plain white. So we're going to add some molds from the frames from IOD. And I'm just using that clear cast resin that sets up in 10 minutes. It's a part A, part B. You just do equal amounts. And so we're going to put some molds on the ends to dress them up a little bit. And then I'm going to also use the ephemeral melange transfers. So we're going to pop those out. And the yellow is like this casting resin. It must have been getting old because it uh, had big chunks in it. And so, but it didn't seem to affect the mold at all. So I'm going to be painting them anyway, so it didn't really matter. And that was the end of it, so, <laughs> which is good. But I'm going to go ahead and paint the middle part of the, the molds uh, white with the DIY beadboard. And then we're going to use a mixture that I, I made this past summer. Um, the Cowgirl Coral from DIY and I believe it's the Victorian lace from Fusion is what gives me that peachy color. And I only ended up doing one coat because I am going to put some dark wax and bring out those details. And I picked out from the transfer book, I picked out a couple of pieces that were small enough to just fit inside there. I am going to seal it with liquid patina first, and that way that transfer will adhere a lot easier. I'm just going to cut around. And use my little tool to put the transfer in there and then I'll just use my exacto knife to kind of take away any of the extra pieces along the edge there and I'll do the same thing for that other one and I'm just trying to again work through things that I've already had, um, trying not to buy anything new. So uh, there was a, a transfer that had just some extra pieces of floral that I ended up using just on the bookend itself. I was trying to use up my stash. I haven't been thrifting. I've been really good. <laughs> I haven't been thrifting since about the middle of December. And I'm still, I'm not going crazy just yet, but uh, you get that FOMO, you know, that fear of missing out on stuff, on cool stuff. You see people thrifting, and you're like, ah, oh. but I'm being good. Got to get through my stash. And uh, so I've got those all set, and I'm going to use the tight bond quick and thick. And place those down there. And then I'm going to flip them up. I'll let them dry first, but yeah, flip them up and then put those little florals on. Just the random extra pieces. And I, backtracking, I should have 
made a mold to go down like the spine of the book that would be really pretty and I still can um, but that was kind of like an afterthought at this point so didn't think of it at the time got to seal up the transfers with the liquid patina and I went ahead and sealed up the whole thing because it was still it felt like really chalky like they never sealed whatever they painted it with so I just sealed the whole thing and so this next one is something I have had sitting around for a long time. I bought it to put it into my studio because it can hold quite a bit. And I want to have like all my mica powders and my candle fragrances and stuff. So I'm going to use white milk paint, Fusion's Hotel Robe. And I put, I believe I put three coats on. And it still was like not perfect, but that's what exactly what I was going for. I wanted it to kind of be thin in some areas, thick in the other, and then we're going to have that crackle finish and we're going to distress it back with my little finger sander, make it look a lot older, smooth out all the, the bumps and stuff from the milk paint. And then I'm going to go ahead and use again a different transfer, but I just had a couple little pieces left from it. I believe the transfer is IOD Wander. And it had just the right amount of transfers for this piece. And before I put those on, I'm going to seal it with Sweet Pickens Top Coat in matte. This is actually made for milk paint, a sealer for milk paint. And here's that transfer. Yeah, so it's the wander. And I just had a few pieces left, so I feel good that I used the entire thing. Makes you feel good that you can get your money's worth out of it. So again, you just peel off the, the backing, use your little tool to push it down and work that vellum up, and then burnish it in. And then you always wanna seal your transfers after. And I just used the liquid patina to seal it. And I would have, if I was selling this piece, I would have painted the bottom. I would have got up under it better, but since it was for me, I wasn't really worried about it. <laughs> Nobody's going to see it in my studio. It's fine. And so I had been thrifting all year last year and found a bunch of these frames, these old antique frames, um, actually from yard sales. I got them. And again, I'm going to go in with the old calendar pictures that I don't want to waste and just glue those on there and then place them back in the frames. And that was pretty easy. I will be adding a few of these projects to my website. I think I'm going to go ahead and add these frames there. And then I'm going to add from the swap meet, I'm going to add both of those tins. I'm keeping the picture for myself. Sorry, guys. I just love ironstone. I have a big display in my kitchen. Um, so maybe next time. <laughs> so if you're interested you can go to the reclaimedranch.com I won't be adding them probably until the middle of this week though and so this other set I'm going to go ahead and use millet's pages um, I'm going to put a couple of butterflies on the other two I didn't have enough florals from the calendar so we're going to go ahead and just paint the background white which I was going to just put them on there and I'm like, oh, I don't like the way that looks. So I ended up putting, just uh, gluing some drop cloth down and then putting the butterflies on the drop cloth. And the transfer works the same way on cloth. You just use your tool and push it down and it will be just, just the same. I had this little piece of drop cloth, which was actually just perfect for these two. And I'll be selling these two as a set. And then there's three I'll be selling as a set. Um, these two do have the glass with them. The th set of three, two of them have the glass and one is without. So 
I'll probably go ahead and just discount the one without. Um, but I still think they look great either way. And because these had glass, I didn't need to seal them at all. So here's all of the little projects. I just think they're so cute in these old frames, all this beautiful botanical flowers and herbs and whatnot. And these little book bookends are cute too. Zhuzhes them up a little bit. So let me know what your guys' favorite thing was. Um, mine was obviously the, the swap meet <laughs> and having fun in Solana Beach. But um, we will be back again later on this week with some more of my stash that's probably going to be ongoing for quite a while. So I hope that's something that you are, are into and like to watch. Um, let me know what you guys would like to see coming up. If you want to see some like bees or sunflowers, or if there's like a theme, lemons, whatever, I can kind of gear my, my projects towards that, give you some ideas. And thank you all so much for watching and supporting my channel. I appreciate every one of you. And we'll be back soon in the next video. Have a wonderful week, guys. Bye.